Good morning, Chatfield Lutheran Church. Good to have you in worship today. I'm Pastor Paul Hostchild, honored to serve with Pastor Nissa Peterson, and it's wonderful to worship with you in church today. Psalm 122, verse 1 says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And I hope you are glad too this morning. We begin with our confession and forgiveness printed on the screen or in your bulletin. I invite you to stand. We worship as we live our lives in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let's take a moment of silence. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved your whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. So in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. We sing, Lord of all hopefulness, our gathering hymn. Congregation may be seated. <clears throat> we continue with our Kyrie and hymn of praise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. <clears throat> if I could have the note. 
In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, have Let's pray our prayer of the day. Almighty and eternal God, you show perpetual loving kindness to us, your servants. Because we cannot rely on our own abilities, grant us your merciful judgment and train us to embody the generosity of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let's sing Jesus Loves Me as the kids come up for the kids' message. everybody. I brought with me today, I have a, a wolf. It looks like a dog, but it's a wolf. And I have a little mouse. Now, these are two animals, right? Which one of these animals, the wolf or the mouse, do you think God loves more? What do you think? Do you think God loves one more? You're not sure? Raise your hand if you think God loves the wolf more. Nobody? Raise your hand if you think God loves the mouse more. Nobody? Why not? Why don't you think God loves one more than the other? What do you think? Yeah, because God loves all the animals the same, right? God loves all of them. Was Pastor Nissa trying to trick you a little bit? Yeah. But you knew what I was doing. You know that God loves all the animals the same. So if God loves all the animals the same, do you think we should feed them the same thing? Do you think this wolf should get the same thing to eat as this mouse? Why not? Because they eat different things, right? And if you gave a wolf the same amount of food that a mouse eats, it would be really hungry. 
They're very different animals, right? God loves them the same, but they're still made differently. And being made differently doesn't change the amount of love that God has for them. And we see that in animals, and we see that in people too. The, the ways that we are different from each other doesn't change the way that God loves us. God loves us whether we eat a lot or a little. God loves us whether we are big or small. God loves us whether we are naughty or we are nice. God loves us the same no matter what. And people have different things that they need and different things that they offer to the world, but God loves us the same. So today in our gospel reading, we're going to hear a story about some people who think that um, things aren't exactly fair, that they want to be treated exactly the same because they feel, I think, that they are loved differently when things are different. But we hear God saying, I love you the same. Excuse me. God says, I love you the same no matter what. Will you guys pray with me? Dear God, thank you for loving us no matter what. Help us to love others with big love, no matter what. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, you guys. You can head on back to your seats. And at this time, we will hear the word of the Lord. Our first reading for today is found in Jonah, chapter 3, verses 10 through chapter 4, verses 11, verse 11. When God saw that what the people of Nineveh did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. But this was very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord, is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning. For I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in a steadfast love and ready to relent from punishing. And now, O oh Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat down east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what would become of the city. The, the Lord God appointed a bush and made it come up over Jonah to give shade over his head to save him from discomfort. So Jonah was very happy about the bush. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the bush so that it withered. When the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind, and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint and asked that he might die. He said, it is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, you are concerned about the bush for which you did not labor and which you did not grow. It came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, the great city, in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left, and also many animals? The second reading is found in Philippians chapter 1, verses 21 through 30. For to me, living in Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy and faith so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to see you again. Only live your life in the manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, 
striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing. For he has graciously granted you the privilege, not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well. Since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as comfortable for the gospel verse. Lord, let my heart be good so open to the seed of your word. Lord, let my heart be good soil, where love can grow and peace is understood. When my heart is hard, break the stone away. When my heart is cold, warm it with the day. When my heart is lost, lead me on your The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around and he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now, when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, these last only worked one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. Did you know that two things can be true at the same time? Two opposite things can both be true. A story can have more than one true meaning at the same time. For example, let's take the fable of the tortoise and the hare. If you remember that story, there's a tortoise and a hare that have a race. The hare thinks that he will win handily in this race, so he kind of messes around, takes a nap, dawdles here and there, and then when he finally returns to the race, 
it is over and the tortoise has already won by continuing to keep racing while the tortoise was, or the hare was off doing his thing. Now, there are two ways that you can think of this story. One way, we're gonna call it box A, one way that you can think about this story is sort of the typical moral of the story, right? Slow and steady wins the race. Pay attention to the task at hand. Don't get distracted by other things. Be diligent in your tasks and you will win. Now, we can also think of this story in a different way. Box B can also be true at the same time as box A. Now let's consider what might go in box B. We could consider that what's true of the story is that it is cruel for whoever decided to put a tortoise and a hare in a race together against each other. It is very likely that somebody was trying to humiliate the tortoise. It can also be true that the hare might have been just tired of racing and running around here and there and just needed a rest. It's also true at the same time that winning isn't the main objective in life and you are a valuable being even if you do not win or if you get distracted along the way. There can be more than one way to interpret this story. Both boxes can be true at the same time. We can A, learn about tending to the task at hand, and B, be concerned when we are faced with tasks that are designed to humiliate others. We can try to learn about diligence and be willing to stop the race and rest for a while. Two things can both be true at the same time of one story. The same is true of the parable that Jesus tells in today's reading about the workers in the vineyard. We're going to look at box A first of, the, of one interpretation, I think a, a fairly common interpretation of this story. In box A here, the times of the day represent the different stages at which people, are my boxes labels wrong? Okay, no, we're good, all right. Sorry, okay. <laughs> um, I, I wrote the labels on this side so I could see them. Okay, all right. So in box A, the times of the day at which the landowner goes out to gather workers can represent the stages at which people begin their faith journey. And in this scenario, the vineyard owner would also represent God. So we would see people who began a journey of faith at different times in their life. We have the Jewish people who have been faithful to God since the beginning. We have the Gentiles who are new and following Jesus and didn't have that faith background. And in Jesus' time, there were many people who resented the Gentiles who hadn't been following the Jewish laws, but now wanted to receive God's promises. The same occurs today. People assign value to others in a church community based on how long they have been a person of faith. How much, they, how much money they give to the church. How much they attend events or volunteer. How fancy they are at worship. Or how much they seem to have their life together. We assign a higher value often to people who have been around longer. So this parable in box A invites us to consider how do we complain about God's generosity to others in our lives? When do we resent God's grace towards others? When we should be welcoming them into the kingdom with open arms, even if we got there first. Also true, and a way to interpret the story is box B where we consider a setting of the story that features the vulnerability and the precarious life situation of day laborers in the midst of an economic system that concentrated land and therefore wealth into the hands of just a few people at the top. We see in this interpretation workers who are treated differently. Some are expected to follow their contractual obligation and some receive unexpected generosity. 
And at the end of the day here, all of the workers are still as vulnerable and powerless as they were at the beginning of the day. Except that we see they've perhaps lost their dignity and probably their unity as workers, feeling angry and resentful towards one another. We see the landowner's apparent graciousness and justice, but they appear to be viciousness in disguise. The landowner has been generous, but only with some people, and in a way that means to incite envy between these two groups of workers. You can always tell when it's false justice because it produces envy and division rather than wholeness and healed relationships. When we consider box B and this interpretation, we also remember that Jesus' disciples, to whom he's telling this story, Jesus' disciples have and will soon again talk about their interest in securing a place of prestige in the kingdom. They say, Jesus, let us sit at your right and left hand they too, like the workers in the vineyard, will splinter and become alienated between one another. And so Jesus tells this parable in this way meant for them. A harsh reminder that there's no justice, no kingdom of heaven, when we end up splintered and alone in the world. Two very different ways to consider this parable. The same story, but it feels a very different story when we consider box A or box B. One is a story of us failing to give God's radical welcome to others. And one is a story of a broken world full of injustice and separation and antithesis to what God's kingdom is. Now, both interpretations of this story can be true at the same time. Jesus has more to say than can be contained in one small box. We could have dozens of boxes of how we hear God in this story, and they can all be true at the same time. And even with the drastic differences between these two ways of understanding this story, there are some distinct similarities. Both show a broken world where people feel separate and divided. Both name that people's worth and value are not in the end defined by how much money they have. Both interpretations suggest that God's kingdom offers to all of us the same gift of grace. And both stories also show, in my opinion, that it's important to the landowner that that harvest comes in. Box A and box B and boxes C through Z can all be true together. Because Holy Scripture is a living thing. It's a living experience in which we hear God's word of love and promise told over and over through different histories and poems and sagas. And that promise of Scripture is heard by billions of people throughout the world, all of whom have unique circumstances and who are at specific stages of life when they hear that word. And the power of scripture is that it can speak God's word into all of those people who come to these holy words. So rather than seeing a separation of all of these individual boxes of which way we see it versus someone else and, you know, we often try to be like, this is the right way and this is the wrong way. Instead, maybe we can imagine that the boxes themselves are God's love that contain every single one of our ideas and interpretations of Scripture. Now, If you're feeling a little bit unsure about me telling you that there are more than one correct way to interpret a scripture story, let me ease your anxiety using the words of Martin Luther himself. Martin Luther says in his preface to the Old Testament, these are the scriptures which make fools of all the wise and understanding and are open only to the small and simple. 
Therefore, dismiss your own opinions and feelings and think of scriptures as the loftiest and noblest of holy things, as the richest of minds in which can never be sufficiently explored in order that you may find divine wisdom which God here lays before you in such simple guise as to quench all pride. Here you will find the swaddling clothes and the manger in which Christ lies. So I invite you to hear this word of God that's set before you today. Know that God meets you in these stories and in the multiple ways of hearing this story that can all be true at the same time. As another example of that, our hymn of the day is the song, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy. And this song has two things that are both true at the same time about it as you hear the song. One, box A, you hear the widespread grace of God offered to all people, as we hear it in the parable of the landowner's generosity. And in the song, we hear the wide variety of ways in which God can show up to us in scripture, and the variety of ways in which we live out our faith as well. Let's join together in singing. Um, as I mentioned, our hymn of the day is There's a Wideness in God's Mercy. It's number 588, and we'll do verses 1 through 3. Today at Chatfield Lutheran Church, we are happy to distribute uh, Bibles to our three-year-olds. They are picture story Bibles, and we're so excited uh, to put in their hands the Holy Scriptures so that they can bring their Bibles to Sunday school and read the stories at home with their parents. Uh, those families who are here today, I invite you to come forward as I call your name, and you can face the, uh, face the altar area. We have Hadley Aguirre. Maddie Anderson, Easton Davidson, Kennedy Goldsmith, Braxton Hotellen, Gracie Meek, Nora Niemeyer, Raylan Peterson, Wyatt Zink, Calvin Cox. Come on up if you're here at this service. All right, we'll give these Bibles to the parents for now, and I'll let you know when to give it to your child. 
going to hold it for a little bit. Oh, it's like Christmas time. <laughs> okay, if everybody wants to face me here. All right, three-year-olds. This is a really exciting time to be able to receive these Spark Story Bibles. And I want you to take these books home and read the stories with your parents and look at the pictures because this is all up. Well, let me ask you a question. Do you kids know how much God loves you? God loves you so very, very much. And this Bible is all about the stories of God through Jesus. And I hope that this, uh, these Bibles are a blessing for you. And so, parents, I ask you to, well, we begin the process of placing in the children's hands the Holy Scriptures as you promised in baptism. So give your child the Bible. Kids, I want you to take this Bible and hug it. Hug the Bible. Hug the Bible because this is about God's big hug for you. Parents, if you want to, right after the service, we have Sunday school uh, opening music at 9.05. And then after that, we'll meet for about five minutes just right up front here, and then they can go off to their Sunday school classes. I'll just say a few more words about these Bibles for the kids. So kids, God bless you as you receive your Bibles today, and parents, might you be blessed as you bring even more God's Word into your home. Thanks, kids. You can go back to your seats. Let's praise God by clapping for God's Word. As the families go back to their pews, I invite the congregation to stand for the prayers. Remembering the caring and generous works of God, we pray for the church, creation, and all the needs of our neighbors. So let us pray. God, who is gracious and merciful, teach your church to invite and welcome all Lead us to be grateful for the blessing of our community. Challenge your church to choose equity and compassion always over judgment. Lord, in your mercy. Dear God, who sends the wind and the sun and the rain, you know every worm and bush by name, so help us to remember that even the most humblest part of creation are precious to you. Show us how blessed how best to care for the earth and all of its creatures. Bless our community with continued needed rain and a safe harvest. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, who is ready to relent from punishing, we pray that you would impart your compassionate wisdom to legislators, judges, members of the military, law enforcement. Give them courage to serve their communities in times of uncertainty, stress, or ex ex exhaustion. Lord, in your mercy. And God who saves, direct your people who are tempted by evil ways. Protect your children from calamity and disaster. Strengthen all who are incarcerated. And encourage all who are in despair or pain of any kind. And Lord, we pray for all who suffer sickness, sorrow, adversity. Close to home, we lift up to you Deb Bothan, Kendall Hamill, Cindy and Danny Bothan, Mike Bernard, Greg Bergen, Jesse Arnold, Rachel Finseth Gens, and all that we name silently in our hearts. Lord, we continue to pray for victims of natural disasters, not only in our nation, but all over the world. Come to their aid. Bless countries at war. Bring peace, O oh God. We pray for those in care centers, care centers and those who are homebound. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord God, who is slow to anger, may we boast about the goodness of Jesus with the confidence of Paul when he was in prison. Inspire us to find abundance in whatever vocation we are called in the world and in service to our congregation. Lord, in your mercy. And remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these and all prayers to you, O God, trusting in your compassion made known through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. 
invite you to uh, share a sign of peace with each other. Michael Punch. That's how the cool people do it, I guess. <laughs> Good morning. Congregation may be seated. I'd like to highlight a few announcements here this morning in our church family. First of all, I invite you to read all of the announcements that are in there because we can't cover them all. However, just to highlight a couple. First of all, Pastor Nessa is doing part two of her talk uh, of her experience in the Holy Land this past summer. That's in the fellowship hall between services. You'll hear stories, see slides, and experience what she did in the Holy Land. Uh, we are creating a visitation team, uh, and for those folks who would like to uh, and who have time to visit members of our congregation who are homebound or in the care center or who are going through a difficult time, uh, consider this. We'll have some times of, of training and getting ready for that. And then uh, you'll have a name or two that you can visit during the month. If you're interested in that, let uh, uh, me or Pastor Nissa or Mike Tiki know about that. Uh, an open invitation to everybody uh, to be involved in our bell choir or our singing choir. Those both are rehearsing. Bell choirs meeting Wednesday night, 5.30 in the back of the sanctuary. If I can do it, you can do it. And uh, the choir will sing again two, uh, see, it's next week, right? Two weeks from today. Thank you, Carmen. Two weeks from today, uh, we'll meet 15 minutes before the service. We'll rehearse in the middle of the services. And uh, that's a great time to be involved. We are looking for more families to sign up to be ushers in our congregation. And we're looking for more individuals to be a reader and uh, those to help serve communion. And all of that you'll get some uh, uh, training for. But uh, I know that a lot of you think, yeah, I could probably do that. But when it comes to signing up online, you might forget or other things jump in the way. So here's a sign-up board here, sign-up sheet. I'll pass this around. And if you would like to sign up for one of the upcoming Sundays, either as ushers with your family or an individual usher, communion or a reader, uh, please fill this out. We'll pass it down this way and then around back up front where Pastor Nessie is. Thank you for considering that. Next Sunday, there's Bible study between services that begins. It's a lay-led study and uh, you'll be uh, enjoying a series by Max Lucado, and it's going to be a, a wonderful series to talk about faith. That'll be in the conference room to your left over here between services. Finally, the Chatfield Center for the Arts is beginning its lecture series on Thursday night. Uh, consider coming to that free session at between, uh, I think it's three to five, and then perhaps sign up for the ones after that. That's great for the community and uh, good for all of us. Are there any other announcements that I should mention or highlight at this time? We are postponing roadside cleanup that was going to be today cleanup, because it's going to be very, be very wet. Postponed. We don't want the kids walking through puddles, and uh, we just don't know when the sprinkling and rain will end. That will be postponed uh, for those youth and adults who will be helping with that. We'll let you know. Any other announcements? If not, let's have our offering. Thank you.
I invite the congregation to stand and let's sing our offering song. Lord Jesus, we thank you for how you give out your word. Especially we pray for the children and families who received your word today. And Lord, as we receive the word through scripture and through preaching and through the hymns, we pray, oh God, that when we leave this place, we would be a giving people. Not because we're so good, but because you are so good. And we want to share with the world and to the church and all who are in need. We give you thanks for this opportunity. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now let us pray the, the prayer the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing three verses of our sending hymn. Tower, not a stone will be left on stone. Let the king beware, for your justice tears every tyrant from his throne. The hungry 
more shall weep no more for the food they can never earn. Their table spread where the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring that the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears for the dawn draws near and the word is about to turn. Just a reminder that we are, are ending the service a little early. Have some coffee fellowship. I invite the three-year-old families who received Bibles today to meet uh, here at 3... Uh, three. At 9.05 for Sunday School Opening Music, and right after that, we'll meet up front here and just have a brief word about these great Bibles. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.